Well, hey y'all, so I'm a little far today, but that's just to give you the whole view of what's going on here. So I don't know if it is you all know about what I'm doing right now, <laughs> but if it is you know, you know. This is a serious part of the Christmas tradition, which is making sorrel. I remember doing this when it is I was really young. Mom used to um, have me separating the sorrel because let me tell you the green inside part so okay this is the seed of the sorrel and this green part here is very prickly that part is really itchy so itchy oh god i put it in the wrong place Nice. Nice. Auntie, that's my auntie <laughs> bringing up bad soccer for the season. Yeah, we're not gonna have this twice or three times. Yeah, that's true. You don't really want to be handling this too often because, yeah. as I said, prickle your fingers. So, anyway, that's all we're doing today. Uh, starting the process of making the sorrel. Now, there are multiple colors of sorrel, right? So, what was the traditional one? Was the red sorrel, which is what I'm cutting right now. And then there's the black sorrel, which I did not realize that so many people really like this black sorrel. Now, I am really too sure what the difference between the two tastes wise are. But when it is, I went actually by this sorrel, right? It has a place that I know sells the sorrel that is um, right outside by the roundabout by Maritime there. And oh my gosh, they had two piles. They had a pile with red and they had a pile with black. I just wanted one red and one black. But everybody come in and they just buying out the black. So when it is you see in people when they realize um the black running out, people getting scared. I actually ended up getting the last bag of black. And the woman behind me, she just left. When she realized I was getting the last bag, she just left. I mean, big up to the lady in front of me because she was going to take, you know, two bags of black. But when she realized that it only had enough for two bags of black she decided that she would just take one bag so that i could have the other bag of black sorrel after even after they done packing up my bag now you know people coming up and saying he's like yeah boy you know that black sorrel does taste like wine and i'm thinking wow i really didn't realize it had a difference in the taste after hearing that and you know seeing that experience with people real rushing the black sorrel i think i will do the two separately and see for me if there really is a difference in the taste. Let me put this on my lap so I can do this a little faster. So we know that over here sorrel is very popular for Christmas time even though like you know within the last few years when I say a few years maybe about the last decade or so it started seeing sorrel around kind of like almost throughout the year but not as much as Christmas time now sorrel if it is you didn't know is actually part of the hibiscus family so yeah you see the hibiscus tea and thing that you like to drink sorrel is the family of that now how it is we start with this sorrel thing well apparently from history this would have been brought across from west africa most likely during slavery times so it is basically a drink that is within that particular diaspora i mean we obviously adopt it and make it into our own and so we would just add whatever kind of spices and thing that we like so you know you can do that you can add rum to the sorrel afterwards or you can leave it alcohol free and you just kind of add more flavors to it to taste now I bought a whole lot of ginger to make some ginger beer so I may add a little bit of ginger to my sorrel just for a different flavor profile. Yeah so basically there you go little sorrel tidbits. <laughs> so just so you can see the difference kind of clearly between the red and the black. Red sorrel, black sorrel. That's it. Yeah. 
yeah wow getting later now but let me tell you something i am now really understanding the difference when it is people say they like this black sorrel a little more than the red because i can notice the difference in the amount of stain that my finger getting look at this yeah when it is i was peeling that red sorrel right you know i just get a little bit of stain it looks something like this and then when it is I peel in this black sorrel now if you see juice coming out of this sorrel look at my hair everything I touch turning red all right so just finished peel my last sorrel and as you can tell it is pretty dark right now let me show you yeah it's night time it took that long actually it's not really night time you know how nowadays it gets dark really fast but yeah it's dark so these are the two this is the red sorrel this is the black sorrel i'm gonna go and rinse these out now to get out whatever stuff i'll cut my pieces of ginger and get the spices or whatever and then i will put my sorrel to Oh boy, oh, this yeah, is spice from, from Grenada. Oh. Spice and cool. Okay? Yes. So you can break pieces from this. Take this one here mm -hmm. and open it. I just open it and wash it. My mom really does not like my ginger and sorrel idea. So shh, I will I will just put a little piece. Not everything you read online might be in the reality. And first time I'm here and you put in ginger and sorrel. I know you put spice and clove and sometimes a little bit of rum to taste a piece of it, but ginger you use for ginger beer. That's it while the water is on the stove boiling um i know sometimes people would say that how they would boil the sorrel on the stove but home here we would boil the water and then pour it in the sorrel so that's why you would have seen me put the sorrel in the bowl with the spices and things the metal reacts with the sorrel and is either the sorrel or the pot something turns black but it's better to pour the boiling water in the glass container than to boil it in a pot it has it gets a different flavor all right so you all heard that and that is over 40 something years of agricultural science experience talking this <laughs> yeah she said that's her sorrel experience so that is more than 40 years right <laughs> all right so the water is boiling right now so my aunt was mentioning that what she did for her sorrel is that she boiled all of these spices in the water itself and then after that when it is the water was finished boiling she poured the water with the spices onto the sorrel now you would notice that we're using glass i am not sure why exactly we use the glass but we have always used glass bowls to make sorrel i would think that you know pouring boiling water into plastic probably wouldn't be the smartest idea right so that is most likely why we would have always used glass bowls to make the sorrel okay so there we have that steaming hot water you know poured into the sorrel and it will be there basically steeping with the spices let me just get the spices down into the water yeah and so gonna leave this for a few days to steep and then after that we will strain it and put some sweetener in it but i'll give you all that process another day okay this is the end for now Bye, y'all.